today on the Music Universe podcast. Hey everybody, I am Matt, and apparently I have to cough. <coughs> <laughs> and I'm Buddy. How are you, Buddy? I'm good. How about you, man? I'm good. How did you get the name Buddy? You know, I, uh, I just grew up being called that by family, and uh, I've only gone with it. There have been uh, people that um, have tried to call me my real name, which we won't unveil because people listening that know it will, <laughs> will know it. And it's just something I've always liked. I've, I've never liked any other name, so I've just kept it, and um, there we go. You ever think you get it legally changed? Thought about it, but I, you know, I, I find it that if I do that, I'm, you know, I, I have more respect for my parents giving me the name than just to go legally change it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I understand that. I didn't even know it wasn't your na real name <laughs> for a while, but we won't get into that. Yeah. So, uh, what did they call you when you lived in Nashville, buddy? They did, yeah. That's all I told them. I had business cards. Or did they call you at all? That, sorry, that's an old joke. <laughs> yeah, they were calling me because my first night there, I was already performing. Really? Do, did you do any big sessions while you were in Nashville? Any, uh, Anything of note? Uh, not, no, I never did sessions. That's another game in itself. In fact, a lot of... Um, before I moved there, my roommate and I at the time, we visited a... Um, a small studio and uh, I was kind of I had played all my life but I didn't know the business side of how things worked I was told that if you're gonna do studio work in Nashville someone pretty much has to die before you even get your chance to get in there so with the small studio we visited <laughs> before we moved down there and uh, again I'm from uh, southeast Missouri for those that don't know so I I'm you know moved about five hours away from home after college and and uh, wound up in Nashville, and um, we visited the studio. I can't think of it off the top of my head, and I'm sh I doubt they're open anymore. So we go in and for a session, and I had been emailing back and forth this guy, you know, trying to get my name out there, some demos, and I said, "Why don't you come in and see us, and and you know, we'll we'll, we'll chat, let you sit in, you know, see how we do things." So I get there, and they're they're doing some mixing, and and it's in a house like a, a basement so i i'm you know right. when you're if you've ever been to nashville especially when music row was a thing at the time uh we're talking 10 12 years ago when i was last there you you go down music row you don't know if these are homes or if they're businesses so you you're almost afraid to not knock you know before you walk in so this was at a house and we got there and um i i said oh that sounds really good how long did they practice this and they kind of looked at each other and laughed, said, Psh. they listened to the song like maybe twice and did it. I'm like, oh, cool. So that kind of, uh, not that I couldn't do that, but that I, I got, I'm one of those guys that I'm confident in my playing, but I get nervous on the spot like that, especially when you know you right. have to go in and you have to cut this stuff. So I, I didn't really uh, veer that way too much, although um, I, I did sit in on a session of a singer I was playing with, and Tommy Harden, who at the time was with Reba, and he's doing his own thing now, uh, he was the drummer on that, um, <clears throat> on about three songs that I sat in on that, and um, I did actually walk into the main room by accident. They left the door unlocked. I didn't know which door to go into. I walked in, and they are right in the middle of a session. <laughs> They ended up locking the door <laughs> after I walked through, and I apologized and sat in the uh, vocal, uh, or actually the, the main room, which was, you know, kind of the vocal booth at the time, too, um, a, a somewhere in uh, Blueberry Hill area of Nashville, for those listening that know what I'm talking about. So um, it, it was a, kind of an intimidating thing, and, uh, you know, you listen to it, you chart it. If you mess up, you just kind of pick back up. They tell you where to go. Uh, you know where to start at and you, you do it you just know what to do and I enjoy I love recording it, it's a great thing for me to to experiment with but it was one of those like I realized I didn't want to do this for other people I wanted to do it for me I wanted to be in a band that I had say in 
how this went, how that went, and stuff like that. So I, I didn't really do any of that, even though I would have loved to. But it just I realized that wasn't for me. But playing live was, uh, you know, uh, any chance I could. Yeah. Did you feel at all like you were like you were trying to make those connections in a un uh, it's really hard to word this. It's really hard to word this. It, an unsolicited sort of an way. Unaccepted way. Yeah. yeah. Because unsolicited. Yeah, way. because they don't. You know, it, unsolicited material is not something they take for a variety of reasons. Number one, they could be sued if, and and many have since I've been to Nashville. Um, you know, many have been sued over big songs because they've the song original, and I'll put that in quotes. Songwriters were at a you know, like uh, at, at a songwriter's thing and they said it or they sang it and then years later a big hit comes out of it that that songwriter didn't get the credit. So a lot of that's been happening. So I I get that, but at the time I didn't... Uh, I had demos uh, of just drumming and, and stuff that I had done, uh, solos, which, you know, didn't really need to include um but i i would do different beats with just me and a, a click in my ear and submit it you know send out emails and i believe that's how this other uh studio um owner uh i believe that's how i was invited if i recall properly um so it it can work it's really not looked well upon especially nowadays when you can do stuff on your own but even back then it, it was hard i had at, you know, at the time it was cds still so i had cds made i put labels on them and i'd try to drop them off um at places or give them out but uh, mostly business cards and you know you just you have to be out you have to be out mingling and playing and yeah. stuff like that so there's and you can't be sorry to yeah. step on you, but you can't be second guessing your methods. I think we all know what is a pro what the difference between c completely sort of, I'll say sort of resigned and conciliatory way of trying to establish relationships, letting the big wigs come to you, what is forward and what is inappropriate. But then the Nashville community throws in this term called germing, G H E R M. And I first heard this term, I can't tell you where I first heard this term, but I first heard this term from somebody who had their friend turn against them. Uh, I, I think I can speak generally about this. Had their friend turn against them when that, when that person, the person who did the turning against, became a, an insider in the industry, turned against her friend that she went to shows with and, and did a whole bunch of things with. And I can't go into any more detail than that because I love this person that I'm talking about that had this happen to her and I, I don't want to make anything worse. She asked me not to really say anything beyond vague sure. vagueness. And it's really interesting to me because you have to do it and to have this germ, germ is a state of mind in my opinion of the person that's being approached. Germing is a you problem. Now I, I found some stuff online that talks about it. Uh, this isn't in the article I sent you, but it, it's kind of a term that developed, I think mostly to protect, we are a litigious society. And I think it's a, a term that came about, I think to sort of in an aggressive way, protect against people artists established artists stealing music that somebody may have shoved in their hands unintentionally right. so if you you write a song about something and it has a similar hook than a demo that somebody shoved at you because you're mr bigwig and you could get them in the office oh boy the lawsuit right. it's unsolicited material but the the reason i this was kind of brought to my attention was that i guess in some ways it can be taken as a bit broader than that to sort of just mean anybody that is trying to establish relationships in Nashville. If the person doesn't like the way you're trying to create that relationship, you're considered a germ. And I, I don't agree. I, with I that don't either because, because, and not to cut you off. I don't either because yeah, many of the examples that I'm reading right now um, and others that want to read it can go to barbaracloyd.com slash germ. And they can read these examples. I've, I've done these things, and it's not out of any way that I, I'm doing it to 
piss anyone off. It's doing it because right before social media, especially before social media, there was really not a good way to get your name out there unless you hired a bunch of people to do that for you. And who, fresh mm-hmm. out of college or high school, that moves to Music City, that moves to L.A., that moves to New York or Chicago or anywhere they want to go to to focus on their music, Unless you're rich, you don't have money to just, okay, let me get a manager. And then even that, you don't know if that manager, unless they're a high dollar man, they're a top professional, you're not going to get them to work with you. So you're going to be working with so-called managers, and I've done it all my music career in Nashville and L.A. I was scammed by people that said, oh, well, we'll do this for you, we'll do that. They might have done a few things, come to find out they didn't do nearly half of what they said they would and the way they went about it was oh well found out later they actually had friends that hooked them up so they were making it look like they did all this and i and i get it's relationship based but you have to build that relationship but you can't if you're moving uh from missouri to nashville and you don't know you know what you're not that you don't know what you're doing but you want to meet people you want to find connections before you get there you have to often hit up people and and i had done that through email for from uh, a couple of uh, people and even got responses back that were willing to help me they weren't necessarily wanting to meet but they were willing to kind of guide me through uh email yeah. and stuff and now with social media it, it's just all over the place and it's a different ball game but you know i i've handed cds i just talked about that i've handed cds of music to people how do you get that out there if you're not promoting yourself music is self-promotion exactly years ago when i was in it reminds me of when i was in high school which is too far back that i even want to recount even further and i kind of (laughs) mean i could not we're not too far apart in age there dude um (laughs) i you know, I kind of made the decision in 10th grade that even though I was at a performing arts high school, I wasn't going to be a conventional actor. If I got cast in stuff and I was offered roles, of course, I love doing plays and I love doing I've done some short films and I would, of course, be open to doing TVs and commercials. But the auditioning game is just, you know, you're told basically sit on your ass and wait for them to call you when you send your materials out. They make envelopes for actors eight by 11 envelopes or whatever the dimension is for headshots, eight and a half by 11 envelopes for your headshot with a clear window so that they, your face is seen before so the that envelope way you're is judged even opened. immediately <laughs> and you're judged immediately. Well, no, it's actually, it's actually goes to show how many envelopes don't even get opened that you feel you need to show them something before they even try to break the seal because right. so many, whether they have envelopes, whether they have that window or not, go right in the trash. And I said to myself, I'm not going to put my career in the hands of people and a decorum that is stacked against me from the very start. I'm smarter than that and I'm more respectful than that. And if you can't respect persistence, fuck you like really (laughs) you know (laughs) it's if you don't see that i am coming from a perspective of of just wanting to do good work and wanting to work on your behalf another example i will in new york here in new york i will go in to businesses if and and either follow up or drop off my resume businesses oh we don't want that just fill it out online well fill it out online with a thousand other you know deadbeat Mm -hmm. candidates and i'm the guy that i think would be good to work with you on whatever project or in whatever capacity and i'm gonna do because growing up i read memoirs about how people would just walk into radio stations or walk into x something or other and get handed a job on the spot because of that initiative of going there. Where is that respect today? Germing comes out of a lack of respect for the pavement pounder. And I'm kind of sick of it because not only is it in Nashville, it's all over the country. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a, uh, an elitist looking down upon those that haven't made it yet. The, the inspiring people that, are they have to get started somewhere again i've played music all my life and and 
there there are people that have helped me and you know i i stepped away for personal reasons uh after a while and have not played for a while and i'm working to figure some things out to to do that again because i i do love that but i i got tired of dealing with this kind of nonsense honestly and i i don't you know, I've been to industry events in L.A., and I've been to industry events in Nashville, and um, Nashville is very much a community where if you go and you don't have a big head, and you, everybody will help you, even if they're trying to do the same thing you're doing and not where you are yet. In L.A., they're out to smash you. Completely different. Yeah. So it, it, it if this term means... That any of these things, you know, asking a hit songwriter to write with you, I get it. But do you have to wait around all your life for them to come well, to you? stop. I'm going to stop you there because Garth Brooks told a very interesting story on Inside Studio G where he was in line at a grocery store, which if you believe, if you believe that Garth Brooks still buys his own groceries. He <laughs> And, I, you know, a songwriter who was behind him in line recognized him and was gutsy enough to say, hey, can we write together sometime? And Garth invited him over to the house and to the to his property, and they sat and wrote. I mean, if Garth Brooks doesn't care about some pleb asking him in a grocery store to write and invites him over to write and, and doesn't care about any kind of the decorum and hierarchy... Nobody right. should. And, and, and persistence should and, be respected. That's why I wanted to do right. this and, episode is because persistence has gone the way of, so, of, of, you know, of the dinosaur in favor of social media, in favor of application portals. And it's like face-to-face has been right, replaced. But, it's and, and when I say I get asking a hit songwriter, yeah, it takes balls to do that. Uh, I, that's great that that can be done. But what I'm saying is <clears throat> to these people that – coined this term germ are you supposed to just sit there with your hands politely and wait for someone to invite you nobody this guy would have never been asked by garth hey you write songs come write with me if he wouldn't have stood up and said hey i write songs can we write some time right. and hey look at him now so i mean it it just I, I the term is ridiculous because we've all been there well it's you have yeah, to get out it's, there it's somehow. Like they, how how did everybody else get out there? Yeah, maybe they, they went yeah. through the proper channels. And what is proper these days? Anything. Social media. You know, people have been have, – are millionaires just because they are a blogger or they do something. Mm-hmm. You know, things have changed. So, Germ, even 10 years ago, didn't make sense because you have to hand your music out to someone. How, how are you going to be discovered? Right. You just – you know, when I met Charlie Daniels outside of uh, the Ryman with, uh, you know, uh, um, I was there a month, I think, met him and uh, he was he was really cool. Came out. Uh, he was leaving the Ryman for an Opry show. And um, I said, hey, you know, just see if, uh, Mr. Daniels, see if I can get a picture with you. Uh, he's like, yeah. I said, I'm a drummer, too. He goes, are you? He goes, cool. Keep it up. You know, and um, well, for example, <laughs> a big way. A big thing that happened, uh, you know, about uh, around this time three years ago, uh, drove to Fresno, uh, interviewed Garth and Trisha. I was the um, third yeah. interview for Garth, and when he, I was introduced to him, I was still moving my gear close, closer to him as the camera crew in front of me were leaving. And uh, I was introduced as Buddy from the Music Universe, and Garth looked at me and said, Music Universe, you play music, don't you? I go, I do. I play drums. How, how did you guess? He goes, just the name itself. He actually was so cool. And and the interviews up yeah. there on the site and on YouTube and stuff. He was so cool. He started asking me questions. He was interviewing me about how <laughs> I became <clears throat> where I am today. Uh, and it was so cool. And he was so encouraging. He says, keep drumming. Even though I hadn't played in years. He said, keep, keep doing it. So it... It, it's right. super cool. You never know who you're going to run into. And by no means was I, I germing because he started it. But right. even if I had said that and he started asking questions, that, that is not to me looking at, ger- at as being a germer. That's looking at having a conversation with someone. And if they can help you and they want to help you, great. 
The worst they can say is, no, I'm not interested. Right. The annoying thing is the rules are unwritten. They tell you, go to Nashville right. and make your own way, but play the game, and nobody's going to tell you how the game starts. Good luck. You know, so you just gotta do dive it in you know, and, decorum yeah. that nobody's going to describe to you, but also try to be the loudest voice, the squeakiest I mean, wheel, the, the, the shiniest yeah. turd, you know, <laughs> if, in the room. If you're room. being a fanboy or a fangirl at the artist and you're trying to drop them CDs, that's completely different. If you're being professional yeah. and you just happen to run into them and you you start talking to them and and you say, hey, you know, I, I love your stuff. I'd love to write with you sometime. There's nothing wrong with that in my opinion. Nothing wrong with it. You know, and it's funny you mentioned Garth because I think his whole team is an extension of that attitude because how this episode came about without – again, trying to conceal identities and with trying to conceal identities and make things okay, is that I went up to participate in the Trisha Yearwood meet and greet at NBC Universal uh, or the NBC Universal store at 30 Rock here in the city. And uh, I went up and of course I knew that the team, her press team was going to be there with her. People that we see, whether or not we're doing a press event with Garth or we're doing a press event with Trisha or we're doing or we're going to a show or some sort of television taping where she's going to be like I went to her AOL build. Yeah. So I I was there and I was there with the, the friend that I mentioned earlier, who is the person who back before I ever knew that I'd become a music journalist, introduced me to Gar help me meet Garth the first time by she knew the studio layout she knew where he would go to meet with fans and and we really formed a bond and she is very very important to me I care about her very very much I'm protecting her identity and I hope she's not even mad that we talked about her this much um, I love her to death and and I said to one of the gentlemen that was there that I'd met and I'd had a rapport with I said I said you know I said some people Look down when you're a journalist that you're coming to a fan event and you're coming to these things and you're participating. I said, to me, that's how you maintain relationships. You see FaceTime. Absolutely. You maintain that enthusiasm. And I said, even though I'm with somebody who goes to everything and she really is a fan and isn't a journalist, I said, she's very important to me and kind of started me on this journey. And I'm not going to give that up for anything. I'm not going to do to her what her other friend did to her. I'm not going to do that. Now, I make no judgment if that other friend felt that was what she needed to do in starting her career, I can, uh, I can respect that if not understand it, but that won't be me because as soon as I lose being a fan and being a participatory person in the events that happen for the artists I like in this metropolitan area that is New York, I lose what makes me a really good reporter. Right. And I've sat next to reporters who are just sour, who have half their review written already and just input a couple of things from the show and that's it. And I've been like, OK, so get get out immediately and give me your job because I will do it 10 times better. And I'm sorry if that sounds arrogant, but it's like, you know, if you're not a fan, what are you doing on the journalism side of this industry? Right. And, you know, and yeah, I, I've been to events where I've. You know, we, we weren't there as press. We were there. Um, I actually have done that quite a bit. And uh, even attending uh, some stuff in Hollywood that wasn't music related. So I didn't have my press stuff on. But I I know how to conduct myself. And I think that has a lot to do yeah. with it. There have been times. And exactly. when I first moved to Nashville, I was, yeah, starstruck, as most people are. Because you don't realize they live and breathe in your backyard. So there, there were times where I, mm -hmm. I was starstruck and then it's like, okay, I gotta, and I've had some people around me like, Hey, just, you know, be, be cool when they come around and stuff. And, and as I got used to that atmosphere, it, it was, yeah, they're just like you and me, but I've had many people tell me, Oh, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. It makes us look bad. Uh, people put us on a pedestal because we're the, we're the act and um you know they're they're in our video and they should be glad to be in there and i'm thinking that's bullshit mm -hmm. what why why can't i express my excitement about what i'm doing with the people that are around us because i have to have this look 
I, I have to be yeah I, I can't be excited because it's gonna make me look bad no that's that's ridiculous so I I've stepped away from things because people were just too dictating of how I should act who I should be around with and things like that whereas I needed and, and I've needed some of that too where people like no they're bad for you 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 should step back but it, it just you know it's people it's just someone's opinion really yeah and you know my philosophy with all of it and how to conduct yourself like you said is openness when we were discussing how to do this podcast if there were obstructions during our recording like you might be hearing a lawnmower outside right now i don't i don't quite you know might hear because, my dogs <laughs> uh i say you i mean our, our listeners might be hearing that you might be hearing buddy's dogs it's it's that philosophy of openness that i said to that team member that i that i had established you know that we're friendly i said you know i i don't mean to be giving off the wrong impression here i'm here i'm conducting myself i'm i'm a journalist at all times but i'm a fan too and i love coming up and having the FaceTime because it enhances both my experience and life experience as a fan, but it keeps me in front of you guys as a journalist. And the moment I explained that, he was like, you know what? I agree. I agree. That's how, that's, I mean, uh, like you said, you have to, that's how it is. Yeah, You have to be a fan in order to enjoy it. I mean, are, are you going to go mm -hmm. cook? Well, okay. Maybe cooking's not the greatest example because a lot of people hate to cook, but they have to. But, you know, you, you want to yeah. enjoy what you do. And, you know, first and foremost, we're, we're fans of music. I'm a musician, but I'm fans of music. And when I stepped away from playing, I decided to start the music website because it was something I enjoyed doing. I enjoyed doing web stuff. I enjoyed doing social media, and I enjoyed reporting music things. Instead of just sharing it on my page and nobody giving a damn, it's like, wait, I could maybe do something more with this. And it's led to yeah, it's led to some really cool things, including you know interviewing people, attending concerts, things like that. But there, there's a way to conduct yourself. You know, I I've worked in radio. I've I know people that currently work in radio. I'm I'm friends with uh, a local uh, DJ. He has no problem telling the um, artists when he gets to meet them. Hey, I'm a big fan of yours you know do you mind signing this or whatever i've i've met people at an event and i've asked them to you know sign stuff it's it's cool it's not a big deal people make it a big deal because they want to make it a big deal that that they're they're irritated at you coming up to them or irritated at seeing you go up to people that they just don't they, they don't they don't like it for whatever reason and it's really whatever each to their own there's nothing wrong with it germing is a stupid term that some elitist gave to people that are not where they are that's all it is mm -hmm. i agree i agree uh, my thing i would even take it a step further with a bit more uh, i would say histrionic and say germing doesn't exist germing is in the eye and the mind of the bothered, of the beholder. Yeah. It doesn't, it, it, it's your problem. If Garth can have a, a person in the checkout line come over and write songs, you can get over the guy handing you the CD. Right. Like, stop and, it. And dude, I, I could honestly, if we wanted to say germing, I could say you were a germer when you were hitting me up numerous times to write for me and I... It, exactly. I ignored them, and then for some reason, I'm like, I need to call this guy. I mean, this guy's passionate. Yeah. I need to see what's up. And, dude, three years later, man, we hang out. We, we're doing this podcast. We talk all the time. It, it's a good relationship. So, Germing, if you yeah. want to call it that, can lead into some really good friendships and really good business decisions. So, whatever. And I think that is a great place to leave this. We're at a half hour. Thanks, everybody, for listening to, it, listening to us rant on Germing. Let us know in the comments on the website and in the comments on Twitter and wherever else you're going to listen to this. And subscribe in iTunes and Stickter if we're up there yet. This is only our second episode. Those feeds can take a little bit, to po a little bit of time to populate. But look out for us and 
Tell us what you think of Gurming. Does it exist? Is it a problem? Have you been on either end of it? And also tell us what other topics you want us to rant about. We call and rant at each other all the time, so we figured out uh, why not uh, record this as part of our podcast. We'll have more celebrity interviews like the Steve Lukather uh, one that we had for our pre- for our premiere, but I think most of what you're going to get uh, for now are going to be these thoughtful, just us discussing, because uh, celebrity interviews, that's cool, we do them a lot, but I think what we really care about is having a forum for giving you our opinions that we don't really get to do on that site, the Music Universe. Dot and com. you know what? All we'll, right, buddy. We'll, not to cut you off, we'll read your tweets, we'll share them, we'll we're on your side, guys. We want to know what you think, and if you don't like what we're doing, that's fine. We we want to hear that too. Yes. But we'll share it all. We're we're excited about this podcast, and uh, we hope that you'll subscribe like matt said and continue to follow us on social media at the music uni and uh, at the music universe.com uh-huh.